I'm here with some members of the Berkeley Computer Science faculty who have just produced a report on cloud computing. Why don't you all introduce yourselves? Uh, I'm Dave Patterson. Randy Katz. I'm Anthony Joseph. And Armando Fox. So, Dave, tell me a little bit about this paper. What's it called? It's called Above the Clouds, a Berkeley View of Cloud Computing. Uh, it's the result of work that a bunch of us have been brainstorming on for the last six months. And so what is cloud computing, really? Cloud computing is, is the ability to do to migrate the computation that used to happen at the edges into the network. And it gets realized through these large-scale internet data centers. Why is this happening now? I mean, what, what changed to make this an interesting topic? Why are you guys writing this today and not 10 years ago? Why do we think this is uh, something we should talk about now uh, as opposed to 10 years ago? Uh, we tried to identify a number of factors, but probably the one that kept coming up uh, most often was the, the, uh, the ability to uh, offer this pay-as-you-go computing, such as, for example, what Amazon is doing. Uh, the fact that they can essentially allow anyone with a credit card to almost instantaneously get uh, what appears to the user to be almost infinite resources on demand, uh, the only way that that can be provided economically is if you start out by having an extremely large data center and you can statistically multiplex all of these different users on it. And uh, arguably 10 years ago, the uh, demand curve of the internet had not yet gotten to the point where we had not one, but actually several major players who were building data centers out at the scale. So Google, certainly Amazon, uh, certainly Microsoft, uh, many others as well. And the idea was if they already have uh, all this capacity and if they need to develop the operational expertise to use that capacity internally and, and to be able to multiplex it across different applications and so on, um, there's an opportunity to derive additional revenue essentially from productizing that. Uh, so that's an opportunity that's really just in the last few years the scale uh, has gotten big enough. Um, and also, frankly, the open source software stack has gotten so rich uh, and there's uh, so many different building blocks that someone starting out kind of from the bare hardware uh, can very quickly get lots of pieces of an application up and running uh, based on open source, and that was important as well. Don't you think it has something to do also with the ever-increasing commoditization of the hardware? The decision Absolutely. to use the same basic Absolutely. computing platform. Uh, you know, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, it wasn't necessarily a given that the Intel architecture was going to really become the de facto standard uh, for building out commodity data centers. Uh, and of course, the fact that you know, with uh, the, the rise of fast virtualization, uh, such as Zen and VMware provide, means that you can sort of very efficiently slice up uh, a single machine and essentially resell it to many people. I think also, if you look at uh, the demand side of it, the ability with cloud computing to be able to very rapidly scale up from small numbers of users to huge numbers of users is, is, a, is very attractive. Economically, it means I don't have to plan ahead for how large a demand base do I think I'm going to have, but rather I can scale uh, incrementally. Suppose we've talked a lot about who might, who might consume cloud computing. Who might provide it? Why would someone want to offer this service? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, to some extent, the, uh, the first generation of cloud operators need these technologies for their own websites. They, they want to exploit elasticity in the way in which their own workloads grow and shrink over the course of the year. The nature of the kind of websites that they provide may be very busy at the end of the year, not so busy in January kind of thing. Uh, given that they already have to install that kind of technology to support their own major website, like for example Amazon.com, uh, why not try and exploit additional revenue opportunities by making it available to third parties when you yourself are not using it or that allows you as a, as a website operator to engage in economies of scale by simply buying more resources that you know as your website grows you will eventually need but in the meantime getting revenue from it by allowing third parties to use it in a cloud computing environment. There's also uh, probably in many cases there are a uh, very good business case to be made for using your data center for cloud computing. So for example, uh, Microsoft has built a number of large data centers because they operate uh, a lot of large scale online uh, properties. But of course, as we all know, they're also very successful in uh, desktop software. So there's kind of a natural opportunity there 
uh, to enlarge a successful franchise, if you could provide some kind of added value to your installed desktop software uh, user base by allowing that software to become more powerful when it's extended into the cloud. For example, you know, you could imagine uh, Excel doing extremely expensive computations back in the cloud, or using the cloud to facilitate collaboration among uh, people who are editing documents. Uh, so, you know, another answer to the question of who would go into the cloud provider business uh, is, you know, there, there may be uh, opportunities where you can uh, enlarge or, or defend a successful business by adding value through cloud computing. Yeah, I, have, I think one more point there is that we think one of the answers to the question is why did this happen now is we think that these cloud providers are just, you know, dot-com era companies who started providing services over the internet that survived became so popular they were forced to push the bounds of what people could build and they started building much larger data centers built out the commodity hardware and I think I don't know if they would have done this on their own as a startup company but they were forced to get to the spot and by getting to the spot of data centers that were tens of thousands of servers that could uh, serve millions of people they discovered that they were able to in a kind of per copy time you know per byte transferred or stored, create a new uh, breakthrough into what, how low the cost could be, and then that meant it was so much lower that for most people's data centers, they could actually sell their profit, is what led to, led to this opportunity. You're saying it's more efficient to have 10,000 machines than 100 machines? Yes, what we're saying is, you know, I assume this comes from economics, economies of scale, that the claim is, I don't know if people claimed it in advance, but they were forced by their workload to build things uh, instead of a hundred or a thousand servers at tens of thousands of servers. And once constructed, they recognized that they had huge economies of scale over the smaller things. things. So much, and, we, and what we say in paper is factors of five to seven difference. And that's such a big difference from commodity computing that plausibly they could sell their own servers cheaper than you could build it yourself. I mean, one key thing is that uh, the providers are buying machines in, in batches of hundreds or thousands, so they're deploying a very uniform, homogeneous environment. And from a management and maintenance standpoint, that dramatically reduces the cost. Should I be nervous if I put my data in the cloud that my cloud hoster will lose it? So I don't. <clears throat> you should be nervous wherever your data is concerned. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you, you shouldn't rely on, on the cloud provider as your, your sole backup of your primary data. I think it's very important to have a disaster recovery plan that includes backups and, and other kinds of, of options other than the, the cloud provider. Yeah, I think, uh, so Anthony makes a good point. I think uh, one of the other, uh, we uh, quote Richard Stallman in our paper, who uh, is very, uh, he's, he's very concerned about cloud computing basically becoming a, a quote-unquote a proprietary software trap for users. And you know one of the uh, one of the scenarios that he envisions is once your data and applications are in the cloud, uh, if they're subject to you know proprietary software that's holding it in place, it, essentially your data could be held captive. Uh, so I, I think you know separately from the concerns of availability and, and backing up and having redundant copies of your data is a question of, from a business continuity standpoint, if you need to get your data out for whatever reason, uh, how easy would it be to do that? Uh, you know, w would you end up incurring an additional unforeseen expense just to be able to move your data from one place to another? I think this leads to, you know, another one of the big challenges in this area that uh, each of the cloud operators has their own unique environment uh, for developing applications and hosting applications. And in fact, one of the standard ways of dealing with mitigating the risk is to allow your application and your data to live amongst multiple providers. But currently, there is no easy way of making that happen. It's completely up to the user and they may have to deal, or the application developer, I should say, and they will have to deal with the potential heterogeneity of the different interfaces across multiple cloud providers. But in a sense, your responsibility for making your data uh, survive any problem with that data amongst one operator is to spread it amongst multiple operators, including possibly yourself. Talking a lot about applications, will it sort of fundamentally change the way we think about writing software? Or is it the case that I will still have this model of I write it on my desktop and then I run it on however many machines in the cloud? Well, I, I think one thing that you want to consider when you're developing applications is instead of thinking about trying to necessarily make the serial performance of that application as fast as possible, it's important to make that application parallelizable. 
So if you can make it parallelizable, then you can deploy it on the cloud and scale up uh, and get the uh, the big benefits of well, cloud computing. Parallelizable in this case meaning horizontal scaling, scaling, horizontal scaling, scaling rather than the you know multi, not so much the multi-core kind of parallelizable. That, hor that the horizontal scalability would be the uh, you know would be the virtue in cloud computing is that given you can buy and discard instances almost instantaneously, you'd love your apps to be able to do that. Another besides the kind of the software environment, is the enabling ability of cloud computing. As we say in the paper, we draw an analogy to the what happened in the semiconductor industry is fab lines became more expensive. It bifurcated the industry into people who designed chips that didn't have fab lines, people who had fab lines but didn't design chips. We think that same thing could happen here. Anybody who develops software now could have their own data center via cloud computing. So it could inspire more people to be or make it even more attractive to software as a service than it, than it is today. We're just about out of time. Any final thoughts? I think we, we, why we write this paper, we wrote this paper because we think this is a big deal. We think cloud computing is going to transform the IT industry, software and hardware. We think uh, as a result of this, people who are going to remain in this industry should, should be rethinking how they do applications, how they do the infrastructure software, how they do hardware. We think the, you know, this will, I'm sure this will take five or 10 years, but five or 10 years we'll look back at, you know, 2008, 2009 as a milestone in the industry and it'll look quite a bit different afterwards. And if you're gonna be working in, in this industry, you should become aware of it and make plans accordingly. I think it's, it's sort of a, a kind of paradigm shift that is, that happens uh, every few years in the information technology platform arena that is as important as we move forward into the 21st century as client-server computing was in the 80s or the initial wave of internet-style computing, web access, and so on in the, in the 90s. This is kind of the platform for the next decade. Yeah, I would echo what, what Dave and, and Randy said and, and also add that you know, we, we also wanted to provide a, a clear, concise terminology for all of the, the concepts around cloud computing. There's been a lot of discussion as to what cloud computing is and isn't, and we wanted to just try and provide one set of, of ground truth for, for what we think cloud computing is. We also wanted to, to highlight that it, the future is not completely rosy for, for cloud computing, but that there are significant challenges that require both uh, technical and, and, and policy and, and uh, other kinds of uh, analysis and research before they can be addressed. Yeah, I think um, one thing that's, that really never fails to amaze me about this field is the ability when, when the, a confluence of tech trends, uh, such as we were seeing for cloud computing, makes possible a new way of, of solving a problem, a new way of building a system, uh, it's amazing once it gains some traction how quickly it can adapt. Uh, you know, um, at Berkeley in the mid-90s, I, I had the pleasure to be involved uh, actually with Randy and Dave and the Network of Workstations project, and at that time, it was by no means uh, a done deal that uh, very large scale, millions of user applications were gonna be built out of commodity clusters. That, that was not, you know, nobody really took that for granted in the mid 90s, and yet once it gained some traction, it really swept away everything in its path before it. I mean, that is the way that, that internet services are built now, out of large clusters of commodity components. And yes, you know, it meant that software had to adapt, we had to you know, think differently about how scaling and, and partial failure models were handled, but the opportunity was so great that people rose to those technical challenges. Um, and I think uh, cloud computing has the potential to be a, a similarly seismic event in that way. So we're excited. All right, thank you all.